We are in module 16 and this is video 2. When I last left you, we had finally learned how to solve a quadratic equation. And I know what you're probably thinking, you're probably saying, what's the point? What's the use in solving quadratic equations? Well, you will find out as you proceed on into your major fields that math is used to solve many, many problems. And when you get into your majors, you will see word problems that relate that are going to use math to solve and you're going to, believe it or not, you're going to be solving some quadratic equations. So in this module, what I want to do is look at some word problems. So let's go to our notes for a minute. Okay. If you look at your notes in section 13.7, the first thing I put up here is a step-by-step -step procedure to look at word problems. This procedure is not for algebra students, it's for any math student. So a first grader would have the same four steps as you would. So the first thing says, when you get a real life problem, the first thing you have to do is read it. And that's hard because I don't know what level you're at as far as reading. I don't know what experiences you've had in life to see if you could relate to it. So I agree with you. The hardest part about doing word problems is understanding them. The only way you get better at it is practicing them. When you're reading a word problem, what you want to do is figure out what do you want to find an answer to. That's the most important thing. I know there's going to be a bunch of information in the word problem we're going to need to use, but the bottom line is what do they want me to get an answer to. Once you figure out what you want an answer to, then you actually want to read this word problem again. And what we're going to do in an algebra class is take all the words and translate them to sound mathematical. We're going to change the English language into the math language. Once we do that, we're going to have an equation in front of us. And yes, because we're dealing with quadratic equations, we should have quadratic equations today. And then we're going to go over our method of solving quadratics, and then we're going to make sure always that we answer the question. A lot of people forget to read and make sure they answer the question. They just solve and end it. So we're going to look at a couple of examples of word problems. Don't be afraid. We're going to do the best we can. So if you look, we're going to go to our notes to application problem two. It says, the length of a rectangular garden is five feet more than its width. The area of the garden is 176 square feet. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. OK, I want you to note some key words in there. Key words, length, width, rectangle, area, dimensions. You should all be accustomed to have heard those words before. And that's the problem with a word problem. If you've never heard those words before, I understand this may be confusing. So you got to stick with me. We're going to review some stuff you should know. We're going to go to the whiteboard. Okay, first of all, I would expect everybody knows the shape of a rectangle. So don't be afraid to draw it. So we're talking about building a garden in the shape of a rectangle. Okay, great. You should all know that the long part of the rectangle is called the length, and this part is called the width. And that's what we call the dimensions. To know the size of a rectangle, you need to know both the length and the width, just like for a room in your house. You can't go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy carpet or paint or anything unless you know length and width. Okay. Now, they do give us a number in this word problem. They say the length of the garden is five feet more than its width. Okay, so we know automatically which one's bigger. Is it length or width? Well, it's obviously length. How do we know it? Because it says it's five feet more. And what does the word more mean to do in math? It means to add. So we know whatever this is, it's going to add five to. The problem is we want to add five to the width. Do you know how long the width is? Does it say? No. So this is where we start our word problems. The most important thing you need to do is write yourself what we call let statements. The let statements refer to what you're trying to get an answer to. And if you read the very last statement in this word problem, it says, find the dimensions of a rectangle. That's plural, dimensions. They want us to find the length and the width. So what you want to find is what you write as a let state. Let the length, let the width. And you got to call them something. Now you don't know what the width is at all. 
There's nothing in that word problem that says the width is 5, the width is 8, the width is 12. So the thing you don't know in math is where you call a variable. And we're going to call that width x. I don't know it at all. They give us no information about the, the width. We call it x. They tell us something about the length. They tell us the length is 5 more. So we're going to add 5 to the width. Well, the width is x. So that's how we'd write the length, x plus 5. It's 5 more than what the width is. So this is always step one in a word problem. Write down the let statements. This is where you're going to go back and answer your question. But you've got to tell yourself, hey, this is the information I do not know. I have no clue how wide this rectangle is, and all I know is the length will be 5 more, whatever that width is. Step two is now to write an equation. Well, with shapes, we only think about formulas. And if you remember from your prior knowledge, a formula is an equation. Which formula are we going to use here? We're going to use the area formula. Because they tell us the area is 176 square feet. And area is how much space is on the inside. So if you remember back, there's a formula. Area equals LW. Formulas are equations. So we're going to replace each of these variables with its information, and then we'll have an equation. So what is area? Well, they told us it's 176. L stands for length. This is your length. It's x plus 5. I need my width. This is my width. It's x. These are side by side, so they're connected by multiplication. Now, you wrote an equation. Your job now is easy. Once you get step one and step two done, now you can rock and roll. Here's where we're going to take what we've learned. Step three is to work this equation. Well, we discussed it the other module. You can't move the 176 because we got stuff stuck in parentheses. So your job is to get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to multiply. Now, I'm like you. I don't want the binomial first and then the monomial, so I'm going to rewrite it the way we're used to seeing it. And you could do that because of the commutative property of math. It doesn't matter what order you write it in, we get the same result. So this is really x times x plus 5. So now we're going to use our distributive property. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. <gasps> do you see what you just did? You made an equation with an x squared. This is quadratic. That's the key. You've got to know by looking, it's a quadratic equation. And once you say that word to yourself, now the menu comes in your head. I know how to solve a quadratic. I was told you have to set it equal to zero. So we're going to have to move the 176. So we're going to subtract it. Why am I putting it at the end? Because none of these are like terms. And we learned everything in algebra has got to be written in descending order. So we'll have zero equals x squared plus 5x minus 176. Once you get your equation set equal to zero, now your job is to factor it. I'm going to have to come up here. What rule of factoring are we going to use, everybody? Well, it's got three terms. I bet you it's the trinomial rule. So we're going to put two parentheses. What multiplies the x squared? x times x. Now, I know what you're saying. Oh, they're big numbers. Yes, but that's why we allow you to use calculators when we get to the bigger numbers. I need two numbers that multiply to 176, but when you subtract them, we'll get you 5. And that will be 11 times 16. 11 times 16 is 176, and yes, if you subtract them, you'll get 5. Because the 5 is positive, it goes to the bigger number. Once you factor... Here we go. It's not quadratic anymore. That's an x. That's an x. They're linear. How many x's are there? Two. So how many equations would you write? Two. And then you'll solve each. So one solution is x is 11. And the other solution is x is negative 16. So first of all, before I proceed on, I just want you all to realize, Look at all the work we've done, and look at all the information from prior knowledge you're supposed to know. So to look at a word problem, 
you got to first define what we want an answer to. That's by writing a let statement. Then you take the information and you reread and come up with an equation. And because this had to do with a shape, we knew there's a formula that goes with it. Once we get that formula filled in, we solved our equation. Because we had to multiply, we got the x squared. It became quadratic. Now we have a process. Ms. Black said to solve a quadratic equation, you set it equal to zero. You factor it using one of our rules, you get two answers. But you're not done. If you said the answers are 11 and negative 16, you're wrong. Step four is always go back and reread. The question says find the dimensions of a rectangle. The dimensions are the length and the width. So one of the things I preach is very simple. You write these let statements because this is where you answer the question. This is step four. Come back here and get me my answers. I want to know the length of my rectangle and the width. So if we take 11, the length would be 11 plus 5, which is 16. The width would just be 11. And this is in feet. So there's our solution. But wait, we had another answer for x. We had negative 16. Well, guys and gals, if you take negative 16 and put it in place of x, negative 16 plus 5 would be negative 11. In real life, can the length be negative 11? Heck no. And that's important. Even though we're solving a quadratic and we said in math quadratics give us two solutions, because now we're doing a real life word problem, it doesn't guarantee that these are both the answer. This doesn't make sense because length and width can't be negative. So what we would do with this answer is throw it in the garbage. It's useless. Something that is useless in math, that's a useless answer, has a very fancy name. It's called extraneous. It is an extraneous solution. It is useless. You cannot use it. It doesn't make sense. So I'm serious. You cross it out. You throw it in the garbage can. That is not the answer. So the answer to this word problem is the length of my rectangle is 16 feet and the width is 11 feet. And it's a coincidence that this number is the opposite of this. Don't assume that. So when you're working through this module, don't get frustrated. Just please remember to use prior knowledge. You should be setting up equations that are quadratic, solving them by factoring, getting two solutions, but then you got to go back here to the let statements and answer the question. Okay, catch you in the next module.